So guys, today's video is definitely going to be different. I'm going to be outside uh, and then uh, I'm going to be inside very quickly just to kind of show you how I draw a snake. So uh, the rest of it is basically just me outside exploring, having some fun that day. And uh, it was a great day today. Uh, really had a good time out there. Uh, was really enjoying the fresh air and the sun. And then also to see some snakes slithering around in the grass. Just absolutely amazing. Actually, in that uh, video that you're going to see, uh, we found a little snake. And just as we we're looking at this little snake, all of a sudden a bigger snake comes up, right? And it was just so cool. And uh, the families that were there, right? Oh, they were just so nice. Uh, I believe uh, Bowden was the name of the boy. And Amanda, I hope so that I'm right on that. But anyways, they were just so nice. And the kids were really interested in learning stuff in that. Uh, it was just fun to be out there and hiking a little bit and uh, you know, we kept our distances but not so uh, did our jobs, right? Uh, but guys like I say uh, Learning, uh, you know when you go outside like that and then sometimes take a sketch pad with you draw a little bit I, I don't do it a lot myself, but I'm gonna do a lot more uh, I have to kind of push myself a little bit on that one. I tend to be inside drawing. So anyways, Let's get on with the situation. Oh, uh, make sure if you don't mind to uh, like button, uh, subscribe. Hey, come on. And, uh, you know, bell for notification. Ding dong, ding dong. All right. And uh, I'll see you at the end of the video. So where do I live? I live in Canada. <laughs> and uh, I live in the city of Hamilton. Now, the thing is, the reason I uh, brought this out today was simply just to do a little bit of practice. The other thing, too, is that... Uh, just walk and talk, right? It's just such a gorgeous, beautiful day. I didn't feel like being inside today. Even though it's cold and breezy, it is still absolutely sunny and gorgeous out here today. So that's why I decided to uh, do my little walk. I'm going to go and find myself some dry leaf litter. I need that for my isopod, right? which I have also shown you a video on my isopod. But the thing is that I thought walk around, see how the day goes, and enjoy myself. Also get a little bit of exercise in here, I need that. It is definitely cold out today. Actually, uh, last week it actually snowed. Very uh, atypical Hamilton boy who says, eh, it's a little bit cold out, doesn't really matter. A bit of a different location today. Uh, normally I'm inside the house and I'm doing my artwork, but today I decided to step outside for a little bit and get some fresh air, which is definitely fresh today. I was out yesterday, I did a three hour walk yesterday, and uh, it was warm and sunny, and no wind and that, and it was beautiful. And today, it's still nice and sunny, but it's cool, and uh, it is quite windy out here. Uh, so it's just a nice little walk. I'm gonna go right down to the uh, escarpment here. So here I am, I'm at the escarpment, I'm like right here at the top, looking down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this around and see the city, right, and there, and you can see the highway down that way, but there's the whole city, and I was kind of hoping there would be a bit more clearing because I was watching these vultures fly around, and it looked so amazing, but you don't get everything you want in life. So I'm going to walk back, just wanted to show you that, and uh, we'll get back to the artwork soon. Uh, walking around here a little bit just to see if maybe we might stir up a garden snake or two. Now, where I'm walking right now is just a few degrees warmer. The sun's beating around directly, right? And uh, if there was a garter snake out, it would be sitting out in that sun, enjoying that. Chances are I'm not going to probably see one, but I'm just walking around just to see if I can see one. Because I love those gorgeous creatures, right? You uh, should know that by now. If you've been following me, I love the garter snakes. So right here is a nice area where it's flat. Uh, but yet lots of sun beating down so that it would allow them to warm up and garter snakes can go out at 50 degrees They have those stripes on them. So basically kind of brings in the heat directly to their body, right? It gets them to thermal grade right away And uh, that's what makes them a beautiful creature All right. So I think I'm just gonna look around if I do find one I'll show you guys if I don't It's okay, too. And uh, we'll get back to the artwork so I just want here to show you Pretty easy to find generally are the little red back salamanders. So I thought to myself, well, at least I'm going to show you something that's alive. And if you take a look, I'll just touch them with my finger there. 
right? And uh, it looks like somebody has tried to grab him already because if you take a look, you'll see that uh, his tail's missing. And uh, that's okay because the fact that whatever grabbed a hold of him took the tail, but not him. And that tail will regenerate. So it's not a problem for him. And he'll just sit on his log and regenerate a new tail. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, look, look, look. Here's a dusty mole. So I'm in right there. Oh, it's another form. Right? I don't believe it's called the dusty. I think it's actually, I, I think I made a really big mistake on that. But it's a gray form of the, uh, the red back salamander. Even I get so excited sometimes I forget what I'm saying. So what's your name? Bodie. Bodie. I love your name, Bodie. So, Bodie. It's a really common garter snake. And a lot of people think all snakes are venomous. And that's not true. Uh, right? I, I know some are not venomous. That's right. And this guy is one of our non-venomous snakes. Actually, uh, in Ontario, only have one that's really truly venomous that's actually dangerous. And then we have another snake that's also venomous, but it's not dangerous. Right? So we have the... Massasauga rattler, which is actually dangerous, and then we also have the hognose snake, but it's a rear fang, and so it's venom, actually, uh, it, it's very minute, and they actually can't inject it, right? So for this guy here, what he does is he's going to go around, he's probably going to grab some earthworms, right? Uh, maybe in little salamanders, which I just filmed a few seconds ago, right? Uh, and that, but that's basically what it's all about, and ooh, it's got some gorgeous colors, and the funny thing about garter snakes is, you go to different places and you'll actually find different colors of them. I actually have a garter snake at home and he's melanistic. Yeah. You know what that means? That means that he has no red pigment or yellow pigment, so he's actually yeah, jet black fun. with a little white chin. Right? But isn't he beautiful? Do you want to touch his scales? Yeah, go ahead, you can touch his scales. Wow, it feels soft. Yeah, would you like to touch his scales? So the thing is, that if you touch your fingernails, Brody, Brody, right, your fingernails and his scales are exactly the same material. Right? I knew that because I... You have that look I, about you. I watch a show at, uh, it's called Wild Kratz. And it oh, I love me. Wild Kratz. Oh, look, 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 there's oh. another garter snake. Another one right there. Oh, oh, oh three. Oh, oh, that was bigger. Brody, I don't see the third one. Yeah. That one's over there. Where? Right there. And that one's oh. here. Oh, here, here. So this here. is coming, here. happening is they might be coming out for breeding. Now, that was the big one, right? See this one here? This big one, right? So that big one will oh. be a female. Males are smaller. That's way too small for a male. Yeah, that's like close. last year's baby. But next year, he'll probably be big enough, right? But what's happening is right now, this time of the year, they come out and they sometimes go into what they call a breeding ball, right? And they actually, what happens is you'll have one big giant female and tons and tons of males, and they go all around. See these rocks here? That's the perfect place for them to come out to be a breeding ball. Oh, I'm so glad to see that you guys are doing everything for me. And oh my God, Bodie, look at that. Oh, she's gorgeous. Oh, you might bite me, but that's okay. Because the bite from these guys isn't going to kill me. And these guys are... Uh, now, they're biter. They, uh, they're larger, generally they're larger. But the bite from these guys here, one of the things that's kind of funny about them is they have an anticoagulant in their bite. Stings a little bit. So that's what makes a bit of a difference. You see this gorgeous snake here. Okay, guys. Uh, since I went out for a little walk and found some snakes today, and uh, that's part of the video that you're seeing today. I thought, well, it'd be kind of fun to uh, maybe just uh, show you how I would go about drawing a snake. And, uh, you know, the way it makes it look nice and cool. Uh, I'm kind of going for a fairly general looking kind of a snake. I'm not going to draw the whole snake, uh, simply because once you get to the head done, you're kind of there, right? Uh, and then the rest of it's just scales and that. But uh, to make it nice and general and simple, uh, I find that uh, if you kind of do follow exactly what the scales are about, you will find that it's actually pretty easy to draw a snake. Um, and that's all I do is I just kind of follow what I consider a fairly general pattern on a lot of snakes. I mean, every snake is a little bit different. But on this situation here, I'm looking at just simply saying to myself, okay, what are the main scales that you generally see? 
right? And then you just kind of break from there to actually giving you what you want. So you kind of you know, form out the nostril, right? Uh, probably lengthen the head a little bit on that situation. And then the other thing too is that, uh, uh, yeah, nice little long neck situation and fall right into it there, see? So I'm not doing a lot to uh, make it hard for myself, right? And then what I find is that when you follow the scales in behind, and then it's the ones that are around the face that you really want to try to make sure that you get correct. And there are scientific names for all of these scales and that. But the thing is, right now, I'm just doing kind of a general, just so you can kind of have a, an idea of how to have a bit of fun with it if you decide to want to sit down and draw a little snake. See? And it, and it, it actually goes pretty quickly. Right? You'll notice how I'm not really having a hard time with it because I'm just kind of following the general. So that's the thing, is that studying whatever you're going to work on really helps a lot, right? Look at it, really study whatever you're thinking about drawing, right? Gives you time to really kind of pick it apart in that. It makes it fun for yourself. And then the more closer to uh, reality you get. Uh, now, the thing is, too, is that I do this uh, for pretty much any snake that I was going to draw that I'm doing something just as a full drawing and having some other stuff involved in it. But if I needed to get specific, I will get right down to the degree and look at all the scaling and stuff like that. And uh, so you see here, see, like that. And then where the mouth is, you've got like a couple of the smaller scales. And then you can start to get into the details of the scales, right? Even the shape, right? Like, think about it, right? Does, you know, does it flop like this? And then it comes over again. Yeah, there we are. See, look at that, see? See, that's how scales can work, right? Now, on some snakes, you have keel, right? Which means there's like a little bit of a ridge. And then on some snakes, it's just very, very smooth, right? And again, just by learning and understanding the animal or whatever you're going to study. If you're going to draw a hand, right? It's the same idea, you know, think about a thumb, think about a finger, think about the, oh, that one's a little bit longer, oh, that one's a little bit shorter, and then, well, that one's just a tiny little finger, right? So I'm just showing you something just simply because today's video is me basically being outside, but I also had some fun uh, looking at the animals closely and uh, also, uh, like I say, I love garter snakes, and I thought, you know, a little study on garter snakes would be a good idea. And when you're out in the wild, you can do that too. Just quick studies, right? And that. But see, in no time at all, I've got a little drawing of a garter snake. Uh, we now understand how the scales work, right? We know that around the mouth, the scales are a little bit different. Then we have some smaller scales, and then the eyes, right? <clears throat> and then if you want to get into adding a little bit more to it to give it some detail, you can, right? Now you can start to play around with it, right? Just add whatever makes you happy to make it look good, right? But your basic general head, uh, if you were doing it from the top of the head, again, you just kind of look and say to yourself, well, it's kind of like these little half moon kind of deals going on with the eyes, right? Then we also remember, oh, well, it, it splits, right? And then generally I go one, two, three, and then I go one, two, three, and then I can work from there as to how many scales I want to keep going and then build and build and then just keep building like that. So there is a way of drawing a snake's head or a snake on the side profile situation, but just kind of really making sure that you uh, study, look at the animal, okay? And I uh, hope you enjoyed the rest of the video today. And uh, there you are, guys. A booyah, booyah, booyah. So there you are. Outside, uh, checking stuff out. And uh, finding some garter snakes, which i got to be honest, it's such a love of mine. Uh, just like that, you know, springtime situation and animals were coming out. And all oh, the little salamanders and that. And I got so excited I was incorrectly naming stuff. If you... Uh, if you're somebody who actually pays attention to the reptile world. Uh, but I just got so excited. Uh, so there you are. Uh, I had, like I say, just a wonderful, fun day. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed a little something different. Uh, and if you did really enjoy it and want to see more, please let me know. I mean, I'm totally full, cool with that. So, as I always say, be cool like a big bull moose. 
and remember to wear your pants. <laughs>